and they're going 35 miles an hour and you get to the end you can either go right and go toward Anderson or you can go left and go toward Pendleton and you going you got an eight o'clock class and it's about five or six minutes till eight o'clock and you're in a hurry and you're getting you're you just passed Pendleton High School and you're coming up on that red light and you're going to get in the left lane what is that little old lady going to do She's going to get in the left lane. How'd you know? Can you tell the future? That's just how slow people drive. No. I mean, it's called taking the, the past experiences you've had behind the little old ladies club and where you're going and taking those two things and saying, okay, in the past, the person that's going so slow that's in front of me is going to go to the left. And you say that to yourself, and then that's what happens. Not that you manipulated that person to going left. It's just that you are taking the probability. You're taking past events. And what are you doing with those past events? You're taking the past events in your head. And you're saying, and you're assigning a prediction. I don't know how to spell assigning. I think there's two ends. Assigning a prediction to the instant on Wild Hog Road, you're assigning a prediction based on what? Past events. Past events. Now, the difference in what we're going to be doing in probability is you're going to use past events, but you're also going to use You're also going to use statistics to predict something. Now, why am I so adamant or I don't like to use the word prediction? All right? Because nobody can tell the future. And somebody usually, sit down, Walt. Somebody usually says, oh, well, there's Chloe or Miss Chloe or what was her name that got in trouble for fraudulent... Miss Cleo, call 1-900-Miss Cleo and she can tell you your future. What's wrong with that? Because if you could tell, if you could predict the future, would you be on TV at a 1-900 number? Where would you be? Wall Street. Wall Street. Where else? Where else would you be? <laughs> Well, yeah, you'd be in the Bahamas after you went to Wall Street. But where in the United States would you go in the government. if you wanted to manipulate being able to see into the future? Wall Street is one. Lottery ticket. You'd be buying up lottery tickets. That's two. What else? Place out west. Where is it? Vegas. Those are the three places you'd be. And then, after you got through with a day or two at each one of those, you would go to... The Bahamas. the Bahamas. Okay? Why? Because if you could tell the future, you could hit every single one of those gambling, and the stock market is gambling, I hate to tell you, but it is. Yeah. You would do it, and you would make money, and you would, you would make so much money that you would just about bankrupt Wall Street, Vegas, and the lottery because you would win every single time, but you'd have to be smart about it. Win every once in a while. Get somebody else to win for you. <laughs> okay? So, anytime somebody tells you that they can predict the future, all you got to do is give them a piece, piece of paper and a pencil and say, what? What's the lottery ticket numbers? Oh, well, I, 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 shut up and get out of my face because you don't know what you're talking about. Nobody can tell the future. But, what can we do? We can take past events and statistics, and we can assign a number to measure the probability of something happening. And that number is between zero and what? One. 
between 0 and 1. Meaning it's going to be a decimal. Now, I'll give you another example of being able to tell the future. On the farm, we get up cows a lot. And you get up cow, meaning you vaccinate them, worm them, and all this other stuff. And let's say that there's a 10 acre pasture right here. And over here, there's a bigger pasture, let's say 50 acres over here. And in this 10 acre pasture, you've got a Okay, I didn't mean that to happen. I hit the wrong button. Let's see. There, there, and here. Okay, this right here we've got a gate that somebody has left open. And right here we've got basically a holding pen. That's where we... There's a gate right there. In other words, we get the cows up right here to vaccinate them and all that good stuff. And then you got a gate right here. You got, got the cows over in here, and you want them to go through this gate right here, and they'll come into this pasture, and then eventually you'll get them into this little holding pen. So you're getting the cows up, and you got two or three people getting the cows up, and they're coming this way, and they're coming this way. This gate's closed because somebody closed it. So they've got a possibility of going into this gate because it's open. That one's open. And this gate right here was left open. I'm standing up here at the back, I'm, I'm standing up here at the holding pen waiting for the cows to get up there because I'm going to close the gate. Which one do you think they're going to go to? Down at the bottom. They're going to go to that gate right there. Now, can they see that far? No. The cow can't see very far. Just the way probability falls. They could go right to here, no problem. Shorter amount of space, but they're not. They're going to go down here. They will go to wherever there's an open gate. All right? I just told the future. I'm going to go to Vegas. <laughs> No, I'm taking past events of lifetime of growing up, getting up cows, and I know what's going to happen if there's a gate left open. They're going to find it. Now, is it the gate that I want them to go through? Heck no. But they're going to find this gate. That's another example. Now, what you're going to do is decide what probability is being used. There's two probabilities. There is the Mayberry probability. And this is the Hubertism. And then there is the physical probability. And yes, they're both Hubertisms. Why do I use the word Mayberry? Because I'm a Andy Griffith nut? Yeah, pretty much. But what is Mayberry based on? Mount Mary, North Carolina. No, that's not what I'm asking. What is Mayberry? Why do people like watching the Andy Griffith show? People do like it. I hate to tell you that, but they do like it. They got three, four trivia games. They got three, four trivia books. There is a cult following behind the Andy Griffith show. Why? What makes it so entertaining? Hmm? Okay, small town, you're getting there. It's a small town. The characters are likable, but why? Can people relate to these characters? People relate to it. Yeah, that's a good answer, but that's not what I'm looking for. I mean, think of think of other towns. It's perfect. It's what? Perfect. It's perfect. Mayberry is perfect. It's a modern day what? Utopia. Utopia. And people love that. Okay? Now, the reason you can't get that with the Brady Bunch is 90% of the Brady Bunch happens where? In their house. Okay? Uh, you can't do it with the Adams family because they just gross me out. All right? 
You can't do it. Name another family. Not even these modern sitcoms because these modern sitcoms are stupid. Yep, like I said, stupid. Uh, <laughs> name another family uh, show. Green Acres. Green Acres. Now people like Green Acres, but did it happen in a town or does that happen in a on a farm? Ninety percent of that show happens on the farm. So people that don't like farms don't watch it, even though I liked it. What well, I didn't like it as much as Andy Griffith. But name another show that has you know a family in it or a town can you name a show that that takes place in a town not me they tried to run a spin-off of of uh andy griffith and what was it called anybody know mayberry rfd it lasted for about six months if it ain't broke don't fix it, don't fix it. and they tried didn't work. What does that have to do with this? Well, the Mayberry probability is kind of like the theoretical probability. It is the probability that's supposed to happen based on the numbers. All right, so you can write that down. I'm not going to write it down because my definition changes every semester. All right, it is the theoretical probability based on the numbers. What do you mean, Hubert? What do you mean based on the numbers? Well, how many cards are there in a deck of cards? 54. Actually, there's 54. Good. But you take the big mo and the little mo out, or you take the big the big joker out and the little joker out, and what do you got? 52. 52. So 52 is a standard playing deck. So anything you do with the probability of deck cards is going to be based on what? 52 cards. That's the numbers. So what is the probability of picking a king? Four out of what? 52. 52. It's based on the numbers. Now, what is the physical probability? Well, you take a deck of cards, and you shuffle them up real good, and you pick a card. And it comes out to be a two of diamonds. Is that the king? Nope. nope. So you do it again. You do it 10, 15, 20 times, and probability of picking a king. Somebody do this on your calculator. What is that? 1 over 13? So it's a tenth. All right, somewhere around a tenth. Point 0.1, somewhere around there. Probability of doing a king and the physical probability, this is actually taking a deck of cards and doing 10 shuffles and doing 10 deals with one card. And let's say you do 10 deals and out of the 10 deals, how many times did you hit a king? Zero. Then your physical probability is what? Zero. What's wrong with this picture? They don't what? They don't match. They don't match. Well, dang it. Well, now you're into the world of probability. Why they don't match? They don't match because one, very hard to get the physical probability to match. You might every once in a while get a, you know, a, a, a number that's close, but to get it every single time is unobtainable. All right. Then how do you get the number close? Well, there's a theory in probability. Maybe in your book somewhere. I don't know. They used to have a real nice article on it, but it's called the large number rule. So right now, you need to make sure you know what the pentax probabilities are, and you need to know what the large number rule is, because I've covered it, so that means it's important. And what is probability, and I don't know, silent or some more stuff. Oh, the scale, zero to one. You need to know that too. Large number rule says that the more times you try an experiment, the closer you're going to get to the Mayberry probability, basically is what it says. The more times you try something, the physical probability will approach the what? Theoretical probability. So write it however you want to. There was a program designed by some college students. And there was an article in the eighth edition of this book. They were talking about the large number rule. 
And these two students built, programmed this computer program or created this computer program that they, they went in and took like a hundred quarters and they measured the quarters, they measured the weight, the density, all that good stuff and they factored that into the programming and they flipped it and they counted the number of times with a slow motion camera they tried to flip it or they fixed the little machine that flipped at the same poundage per square inch. In other words, the flips were what? Identical. Okay, it was done by a machine. So. And then they took all that information and they programmed it into the computer. So that, therefore, they could take a mathematical algorithm and predict what the probability of tails would be after 10 flips. A thousand or a hundred flips, a thousand flips, ten thousand flips, and a hundred thousand, and so on. What number do you think the physical probability was starting to match the Mayberry probability? Well, the Mayberry probability is point what? Point what? Five. Half. What? There's two sides to a quarter, right? Heads or tails. So point five, one half took 100,000 flips in that computer program to get to point four nine 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 five four five something, something, something. Okay? Now, why do you have to think about the large number rule? Well, are you going to be at Michelin one day as an executive flipping quarters? No. no. But you will be asked to give what at the end of the year? A summary. A summary or a report. Now, if you're making $120,000 a year with Michelin as an executive or whatever they pay, six figures, and you have a board meeting Monday morning at 8 o'clock, and you've had six months to prepare the meeting, let's say you are the quality assurance director or executive at Michelin, are you going to go out and pick five tires to look at? Are you going to pick 5,000? 5,000. 5,000 because of the large number rule. Okay? That's why they want to talk about the large number rule. So if you're going to put your neck on the line at a report at the end of the year, you better make sure you cover your what? Your backside. By using not five tires, but maybe 5,000. And that's why you use the large number rule. Okay, so let's do some basic theoretical probabilities. And the reason I do this is to show you how to come up with the probabilities and to think, you know, some of y'all might not know how many cards are in deck cards. Some of you don't know how many face cards are in deck cards. I know some of you, some of you invented the deck of cards, I know. But some people don't know what's a deck of cards. Some people don't know what a die is. What is a die? It's a single cube out of the dice that you get for Monopoly. One of those cubes is called a die. Sometimes I have asked a question on a test and the student came up, this was a hard copy test a long, long time ago, and the student came up to me and said, is this a, graph, is this a graphical or typographical error? She thought it was supposed to be dice, and it said die. What is the probability of a six on rolling the die? And she was like, I don't know what a die is. And I said, it's one cube of a die. It's half of a pair of dice. Oh. So you see, a lot of people assume things. But you know what assuming does. Yeah. Yep. You don't want to do it too much. Especially if you're an executive with Michelin. You do not want to assume. Because you'll get fired. All right. So let's... How about, I'm going to see how many of you can do this. And again, I'm not, I'm not doing it to um, insult your intelligence. So I just want to make sure that everybody knows about a deck of cards before I give you a test. I want you to tell me what the probability of a face card would be. And if you don't know, just sit and meditate. Because we're going to go over I want you to tell me what the probability of an even card would be. And an even card would be just 
a number that counts as even. And in this case, we're going to say that the ace is equal to 1. Okay? I'll put ace is equal to 1. I have to give you that information because the ace can mean what? What can the ace be? 1 or 11, Hubert. That's right, class. And let's go ahead and do the probability of rolling a 7 on a die. Now, in a lot of classes, that would be three basic questions. But I guarantee you somebody in here is going, well, what, 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 in other words, what, when, and where is going to be used in our sentence? Because not everybody plays cards all the time. Not everybody rolls a die all the time. So, you know, you may have a question. Go ahead and find those three right quick. And if you can't, just consider yourself a disappointment and a failure. Do you want the probability of an ace? Mm -mm. Probability of picking an even card. I think I'll give me a chicky finger. Where are the plates? Y'all take them, took all the plates. Y'all suck. Yeah. Well, you still got a plate. I didn't even get anything. You didn't let me get anything. Okay, well, now you can. Yeah. You're going to call DSS while you're at it? <laughs> just use, nobody else is going to use it, just use the black thing. You didn't listen to a word I said. Did you see that? <laughs> Walter, did you not hear a word I said? What did you say? <laughs> I said just use the black thing. Oh, well. All right. If you ever need to know how many things are in deck cards, I can always always tell students this. Go Google Soldier's Deck of Cards. Anybody ever heard of that before? No. No, it's your parents' fault. Well, hello. Just Google Soldiers. Deck of cards. So if you're not familiar, and I know there's somebody in here, you don't have to raise your hand, but there's always one person in the class, one or two people, that have never touched a deck of cards before in their life. Dang old soldier deck of cards, dang old images. Dang old, where is it? Okay. Not like this. Oh, well. Maybe I'm looking it up wrong. Hold on. There it is. Soldier's Bible. Sorry. And you can... Soldier's Bible. There it is. It's a song uh, uh, Bill Anderson sang it back in uh, the 60s or 70s. I can't remember. I usually pull it up on images. Okay, I'll just quit. How about that? Let me just do web again. I don't want a video. God to. What? <laughs> God to you? <laughs> well, I don't know what God to you is. There it is. Okay. Usually it comes with a picture and it tells you. And anyway, it's a, it's a little thing that was written a long time ago about a deck of cards. Anybody made the association with how many weeks, of, how many weeks are there in a year? We, yeah, 13 weeks. How many? No, 52. Oh, yeah. 52. There's 52 decks. There's 52 cards and deck cards. There's 52 weeks in a year. That kind of a relation. Well, that's where Daniel comes from. Okay? So. So they look at one a week. 
Um, but they look at one a week. No, no, it's, a, it's just, if you remember all of this, you can remember the deck of cards. You can remember the numbers in the deck of cards. There's four suits, that kind of stuff. There's 13 tricks, blah, blah, blah. There's 13 in each suit. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't want to say that because somebody will say I'm trying to convert them. And I want the ACLU coming in here. So, but anyway, that's the way people remember the deck of cards. Anyway, so, deck of cards, how many suits are there in a deck of cards? Four. So you got to remember that when you're doing the calculation of a face card because you can't just go, oh, there's four face cards, four out of 52, or three face cards. You can't do that. you got to multiply the three. There's the jack, the queen, and the what? And you multiply that by four. Dang old 12. So the face card is 12 over what? And that's your answer. Now, would everybody know that? No. no. I guarantee you can go to Waters World and pull up, or go to Jaywalking and pull up deck of cards, and I guarantee you they went out and interviewed people about deck of cards, and I guarantee you somebody goes, I have no idea. How about an even card? Well, what I usually do here is I usually draw it out. Ace is what? One, and then you got your two, and your three. How is the ace and even? And your one? four, and your five, oh. and your six. Can I be in charge for a while? No. <laughs> Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Do we have a foil? And then what? King, Queen, and what? Jack. Is that all the cards? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Am I skipping that one? Yeah. You, you think a 12. Yeah, there's oh, no See, I don't know my deck of cards. They ain't no 11. They ain't no 11. No. Oh, the face card. Okay, the ace is 11. I'm sorry. How's this up? Well, I don't play cards that much. I play spades. That's it. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Now we're back to earth. All right. Now let's go through and knock out the odd ones. So take my handy dandy red marker, and we knock out the odds. And back. Because what is a king, queen, and a jack? Ten. There that is ten. So how many cards are even? Well let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And eight times four is over fifty-two, which is thirty-two over fifty-two. And nobody ever worries about thirty-two over fifty-two. You reduce it. Down to what? Uh, 8 over 13. Somebody help me out. Yeah, it's 8 over 13. And that's, uh, well, 6 out of 13 would be about a half. So you're probably talking about 0. 0.65. Somebody help me out. What does it come out to be? Hurry up, Vanna. 0. 0.615. Oh my gosh. I was off by four hundreds. Point six what? One five. Okay, six two. So there is your probability about picking a face card. So would you bet a hundred dollars on it? Yeah. Yeah. You got a sixty-two percent chance of winning. Is Vegas gonna give you a hundred dollars? That game don't exist. Why? <laughs> because of this. The players don't win. Okay? There's two entities in the world that is not into the charity business. One is the bank, and the other is Vegas. Okay? People say, oh, well, they give you all this stuff to go to Vegas. They, they, they pay for your room. They pay for your food. Yeah, because they want you to what? 
they want you to gamble because they're going to get all that money back and then three or four times that much. What is the saying that I always tell y'all? Nothing is what? Free. Nothing's free. Now, why does this influence if this game is in Vegas or not? And Vegas would go what? Bankrupt. Bankrupt. So this probability for Vegas to have it should be what? Close to zero. That's what they want. They want the ones that are close to zero because that means they're getting the what? Money. What's the probability of rolling a seven on a die? Zero. Good. Why? There is no seven on a die. But people don't know that. Hmm? Oh yeah, well we're we're talking about six side. Okay, I didn't I didn't specify. All right, I didn't know the octagon die or what. But anyway, on a regular die, that is zero. But see, I have put this on a test, and people have left it blank because they didn't know the answer. Okay. All right, so there is a few examples of what Mayberry probability or physical probability. Mayberry probability. Theoretical probability. Because I have not shuffled a card, I have not rolled a die, I have not done anything. Now, if we bring a deck of cards in here, and I give each one of you a deck of cards, and I tell you to draw ten times, and see if you can get a face card or even card, then you would be doing a physical probability. See the difference? Yeah, I see the difference. Thank you, class. Appreciate the interaction. Any questions on this? No. Alright, now we're going to get into the roulette wheel. This is a test question. A real little thing where they throw the ball on it? Yeah, they throw the marble. Yep. Everybody ever seen The Gambler with Mark Wahlberg? You know I love movies. It's a good movie. It's it's a little bit weird for him. It's a little bit weird because he's usually a analytical type actor, that, but he's in the kind of a Michael Douglas uh, character because it's just weird. Anyway, he's a professor that goes off on these rants, a professor of literature, I think, and uh, he likes to gamble. The only problem with his gambling problem is that he'll went up to millions of dollars and then he'll gamble it all away and lose everything. Okay? Um, anyway, I don't want to give you, give you the rest of the movie, but the, basically, in the movie, um, he talks about, at the end of the movie, there's a roulette wheel involved. Now, there's several ways that you can bet on a roulette wheel. If you don't know what a roulette wheel is, just bang old Google it. No, nobody should... No, I mean, it's not one of those things that are commonly talked about in, at the family dinner table. But anyway, I'll just pull it up here. I hope I spelled it right. 